Welcome back, friends. Thanks for being here. Buckle up and subscribe because it's going to be fun. Today, it is the beginning of March and temperatures are getting above 40 degrees and that means that it is maple syrup time. So we're going to get some buckets and tap some treat. Oh, wait a minute. This is an electronics channel. Scratch all that. What we're going to do today is take a look at the USB uh, Morse code keyboard input device that we made last week and make some changes. Got some feedback from one of my wonderful subscribers about how the accessibility community has added a space to the Morse code character set. We're going to modify the code. We're going to re-upload it to the Teensy after we make and compile and build it and uh, test it out. Then I'm going to show you how to contribute that code back to the public repository so everybody else gets a chance to take a whack at it. Coming up. Okay, so step one would be to get some version of Git installed on your workstation, whatever version makes you happy. I am a command line junkie. I use the command line version. I also happen to be a uh, Mac user in this case. So I have the command line version for Mac installed. Plenty of tutorials and instructions out there on how to get uh, what you would like to use installed on your machine. So we're gonna jump right into step two. Step two is to visit the repository in a browser. Again, the links and all the comments and code snippets we're gonna do are down below in the description. So you will not need to take fastidious notes as we do this. This will just give you a walkthrough of what the process looks like. So once you pull the repository up in your browser, there is this big green button, clone or download. And we are going to clone this repository locally. So I want to hit this copy button here to copy this uh, resource locator onto my clipboard. And then we're going to switch over to the command line. In my case, I like to use Dropbox to synchronize all my work between all the different machines that I happen to work on. And inside of that, I keep all my repositories in a workspace folder. And this is a ham repository. So it's going in the ham repository folder. Git clone and the resource locator that we copied from the website. That's going to copy out the data. It's going to create a folder named after the repository. So we'll change into there. It'll show that we're on the master branch. The first thing that we want to do is start working on our own branch. We don't want to mess with master. That's supposed to be where all of the production ready code is. So we want to git checkout dash p. And we are very original thinkers here. So we're going to call this make changes. We're going to spell it right too. Okay, so now that we're in there, the text editor that I use likes to leave backup files on disk, which is a handy dandy feature. But if I check those in, it's going to make a mess. So the first thing that I want to do is tell git to ignore those backup files by creating a dot git ignore file. Inside of there, I'm going to make a comment that these are editor backups. And my editor takes the original file name and appends a tilde character to the end of it. So anything, any file that ends in a tilde character is going to be ignored by git now. And we just put that in the git ignore file and git does the thing. So now we've got a branch, we've got a git ignore file. We're going to edit the alphabet uh, descriptor that we have. It's a, in this case, the original author of this made it a Perl script that will take it from something human readable and make it something a little more readable by uh, the C programming language that he has used for this. So let's edit that. And as you can see, it's a Perl script. It's going to read the data from the bottom of the code and turn it into something a little more machine readable. So we're going to insert our space character here so with uh, some feedback from the last video that I got. I was told that the accessibility community has adapted Morse code to have a space character, and that space character is the opposite of Z. So it is did it da da. We'll go ahead and toss that guy in there, and we'll take a look at some of these other characters that are in here. And fairly straightforward, familiar alphabet that you've got, gotten used to, and there it all is. So we will save that file, and we will run it with Perl make alphabet, and we will redirect the output to morse.h. And now we'll take a look at morse.h because we're curious folk. And here's the uh, other format and one line for each character inside of a larger array of data. Okay, so now we want to compile that. So make clean would be the first step to clean up our environment, get rid of all the old straggly code that's out there. 
and that is clear and then we want to make and that made good if you get any errors it'll actually tell you what the errors are and then you can go troubleshoot them it's probably a space where a space shouldn't be or an extra line or something along those lines probably something pretty straightforward because we haven't made a whole lot of changes right here so the next thing we need to do is load the teensy software so this is the website for the teensy software and i will leave a link to that down below in the description uh, they have a version for each of your operating systems that are pretty popular today mac linux windows uh, i run mac so i have downloaded the mac version and it is fairly straightforward it comes in a zip file and in the zip file uh, is it a zip file or is it a dmg file it is a dmg uh, load the dmg copy the teensy to your applications folder or run it directly uh, in my case on mac os i had to tell it that it was okay to run this file that i downloaded so you could do that in your system preferences security applet but uh, i've already done that and uh, i'm sure you can do that on on your machine as well so i'm going to load the teensy software and i'm going to tell it that i want to open up the iambic hex file that was created uh, by the make routine that we just ran and then you can see that it's got this big instruction i mean this this program is pretty overwhelming in all of the things that it can do but it has this uh this big instruction here that says push the button on the teensy to manually enter program mode so i'm going to reach into my case and i'm going to push the button and now we have noticed that that instruction is gone this first button here well the very first button loads the hex file we've already done that the next button copies it to the teensy download complete the last button reboots it and now the reboot is okay and we are back to where we started from where we can push the button and load another one. Another way to do this is to hit this auto button, and then when I press the button on the Teensy, it automatically programs and reboots the device. Now let's go over to our command line and let's check our work. And there's a space, and there's a U, and there's a Z. So now we've got the space character where we didn't have it before. Excellent. So the next thing that we need to do is upload that to the Git repository and create what's called a pull request. So first thing I want to do is check to see what all has changed. And a lot of this has to do with the compiling of the code. This is the make alphabet Perl script that we changed. This is the morse.h output from the make alphabet. Uh, what you won't see is the editor backup files. So we changed the make alphabet file. So you will not see that in your uh, git status. And here is our git ignore file that we created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add everything in the current directory. You can add individual files or you can add all files. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and add all the files git add dot adds all the files in the current directory we're on git status again and now instead of being red as untracked it will be green as being tracked so we're going to create a commit message for all files with the dash a and the message is added the space character and compiled and now that tags all of those files with that commit message and they're ready to be committed. So now we're going to push them to GitHub, git push origin, which is our machine's copy of the repository to the make changes branch. And we're gonna spell it correctly. All right, and then we'll head back over to the web page. And if you see, uh, make changes is the branch that I pushed up and I'm gonna click this compare and pull request button and it will show me my commit message is added the space character and compile and then it's going to show me what the different uh, files are that have been changed and what the differences are with those files so there's the git ignore change that we made and there's some binary changes in the iambic hex file scroll past those guys and we have some more iambic files that have changed and then here's our make alphabet so you can see that the changes that we made have been uploaded and tracked and everything so i'm going to create a pull request and what this will do is notify the repo owner which happens to be me that someone wants to make a change and there it is so i will see that the change needs to be done and i will come out here and i will have the ability to merge the pull request if there are no conflicts if there are conflicts it needs to be fixed so we'll go ahead and merge that and we'll confirm the merge and then we will delete the branch because we don't need that anymore so there you go we have now added the space character and we have reloaded it onto the teensy and as a third step we have uh, uploaded it to github so that everybody else can benefit from our changes so i'll go back to the main repo and you will see that some of these files have been modified a few minutes ago from adding the space and some of them are the initial commit and some of them are the updated readme so thanks for being awesome thanks for being here be sure to like comment subscribe do all that youtube stuff that makes YouTube happy and keeps their broken software running. Uh, leave a comment below if you found this useful or if you have anything else to add and I will uh, add it or uh, let me know if you've made a pull request and I will take a look at it and then merge it in. Thanks again.